If you've been around for a little while, you've probably heard me talk about the plot. I thought it would be a good thing to actually run you through what the plot is and something that might be helpful for you to use or to create for your own shows if you are working in a school or in a community theatre show or if you're just in a space where it's not the norm to do this but maybe it might actually be really helpful for you. If you are new here and you have no idea who I am, my name is Monique. I am a live entertainment tech working in Australia. In the last two years I have worked and toured on some of the biggest theatre shows in the country. You may be familiar with a couple of them as the radio mic technician or as the sound swing. What the plot is, is a document that lists everything that we do during a show, in this case for sound. Every department will have their own plots, props, stage managers, everybody will have a plot that they follow for a specific person, for a specific role, in a specific department, for a specific show, to make specific things happen specific. In sound terms we use two different backstage plots. We'll usually have three people in a team, one person out the front mixing and two people backstage, one monitoring which would be the B plot and one on deck doing cues which is referred to as the A plot. You could absolutely combine the A and the B plot and sometimes there is no choice. There is only one person backstage and you have to do both the A and the B plot. In some shows there are three people backstage or more, it just depends on the show but typically there's two more often than not, I would say in smaller shows, there's just one person. So today I'm gonna to run you through how I make the backstage plots for the shows that I've been on and what kind of things I put in them. The plot is helpful for when you are learning and creating the show, like during tech and previews is when I usually make the plot. I start with a draft based on what I know about the show and a document that I will talk about in a second. And then throughout the tech and preview period, I will add things. We will figure out certain cues that need to be done, things that need to happen that are specific for our our show and our company. This documentation, having an actual written down plot is also incredibly handy if you are unwell and somebody else needs to do the job, sometimes without any training or if you're training someone new to be able to fill in the role that you're doing. The document that I usually use to help start making these plots is given to me by the sound designer or the associate sound designer and it is kind of like a god doc that has every bit of information that you need. This is a document that is usually given to me but it's absolutely one that you could make your Yourself. I can't show you any examples of these documents because they are confidential property of the shows, but they essentially are just a big Excel spreadsheet that has every single song and scene in the show on the top and on the side it has every single character and then it will mark down for you who is in the song, who is singing in the song and who has a solo line and any other bits of information that you can fit in there. This information is worked out with the sound designer, the music director and the director. If you are doing this for a community show, this is something that you can work out with the person doing the music and the directing just to figure out who they've decided is going to be singing when and from where because that will tell you what is going on on stage and everything that you need to know about how you fix things during the show. Today we're going to make a little bit of an A and a B plot together. I'm going to use Phantom of the Opera as an example show because that means that I can go from memory since the show is so burnt into my soul I can go from memory and think about cues or things that would matter in that time without actually having to show you actual documentation from the show itself. So if anything is a little bit off or wrong, please excuse me, Phantom fans. You can recreate this for any show that you do basically by just following the same kind of format and the same kind of ideas. So to start with the B plot and then we'll go to the A plot and then we'll go back to the B plot and you will see why. I've made up a template just for a act one B plot for Phantom. It has down all of these scenes and songs. I will usually put these kind of columns in a different color just to help with the brain looking at the documentation. For the B plot, we've got a column that is in scene and then notes slash listen. So in scene is a list of every single person who is on stage. If they have a solo line or a bit of dialogue, I will either name their character if they are part of the ensemble or all of it will be in bold. So it would say like female ensemble one, blah, blah, blah in bold. And then underneath it would say like a general female ensemble if they just sing a background. In the notes slash listen part is where I would put anything that you need to know. So this person puts on a hat in this scene so they may sound like crap. This person changes a costume here so that's what you should be listening for. Make sure to listen for this because this has been happening. So for Hannibal, I might put ensemble, but I will also put down people who have lead lines. Like for example, Carlotta 
Pianji, if I could spell, Raya, and the other managers, they all have lines as well as the full ensemble being there to sing. So I would put it like that, where there is a bold for the people who have solo lines and just ensemble for everyone being there. If there was someone who was not in the scene, like if there was one person who wasn't in the scene, I would put ensemble excluding one person, or maybe I would put it in the notes, depending on why they're out of the scene. The listen column also comes in handy for when you need to note down costume changes changes or wig changes or things like that that are happening that might affect the mic and its sound. For example, in Prima Donna, often Carlotta will do an onstage wig and costume change. So I would put down in Prima Donna, so I would write down Carlotta wig change so that the person knows to be listening for this. You can even put down like the exact line that it happens in so that when this happens, if it does cover the mic, the B plot will know to radio through to the A plot and to tell the person in front of house that that is what has happened. It is also super useful for when you are doing cues with both backstage people, like if the person on deck is doing a cue with a cast member or fixing a mic and the person on the B plot needs to have a listen and check that it's all good. For example, when the journey happens, often the Phantom is wearing a hat or a cloak and there is sometimes a microphone in that. On our production, we had a microphone in the Phantom's hat on both the productions I've done actually. So before the first journey, there would be a hat check cue because the hat wouldn't stay with the Phantom, it's a bit of costume, he would put it on just before he goes on. During the Australian indoor tour production, we were behind a wall on stage for a couple of songs when he would then come out of the mirror. So there would be like a hat check in this column. If you were the B plot, it would be to listen to the hat. If you were the A plot, it would be there to put the hat on, check that it's all good, radio through to the person on B plot and get them to let you know that it's all good before it goes on stage so you know you don't have any problems. In an ideal world, the person monitoring would be monitoring a song ahead. The most common thing that you would be doing with this documentation is going, okay, cool, this group of people is on during this song that is ahead of the song we're currently in and I know that they're about to come to stage. I will listen to their microphones with enough time for me to tell the A plot if there are any problems so that they can fix it. Speaking of the A plot, let's move over to the A plot. The A plot has a couple of new columns. It has the same scene, song and notes, but it also has an action and a location. For an example, if we were talking about that hat cue with the B plot, the action would be to check the hat and the location would be behind the wall. I started adding a location column to these plots pretty quickly when I realized that just having the action is not enough information because if you are someone who doesn't know the plot very well or you are learning and you just have down, check the whatever, fix this person's whatever, you have no idea where you're going to and that loses time that you need. In a situation like this, I would use the notes to write down radio through to B plot so that anyone learning this or myself when I'm learning it would know that yes, you are checking the hat, but that you also have to radio through to B plot to make sure that it's all good. If I have multiple cues in a row, I would try to line them up with their action and notes and location in the same scene. For example, after the music of the night is when the hat would come off stage after it was used in the journey. So in the morning after scene, my job would be to collect the hat because it has a microphone in it that I would typically take out at that point Point because it's not used again, if it's not used again. So my action would be to collect hat. That could be OP wing three. And in notes, I could have down, will be thrown to you because that does happen sometimes. Just after, sorry, this wouldn't happen in the morning after, it would happen in the magical lasso scene. You get it. Just after this scene though, is managers, which is the first large scene with all of the principal characters. So straight after I collected the hat, I would go around to prom side where they all enter from and I would check lead posse. Is usually what I would write for that because it's check lead characters, mic positions. I wouldn't put anything down for notes usually for something like that because it's pretty self-explanatory, but that is what I meant about you would line up cues with the things that you're doing. If I was particularly finding it hard to read, I would leave another space between all of the things so that I know that they're super different. Just depends on what you need to make it easier to read. Like I mentioned before, sometimes the A and the B plot do cues together. Another example of this other than the hat is that typically in Hannibal, the lead male ballet dancer will be 
shirtless and in the productions that I've done when they are shirtless they do not have a mic on. So this person wouldn't do normal mic checks at the top of the show at the five like everybody else. They would do a mic check when they get their mic put on after their scene. So after Hannibal when they come off during Think of Me. For example the last production we would do it at the wig bench so that would be the location. I would re-mic or mic up. I think it was Ensemble 11 or 7 were the two different options for the people who would play this role. And then I would put down Radio Through to B plot for a check and on the B plot if we go back over there in the same song it would have listen to M11 for mic up do check so that they know to do that. You would do this for every single song in every single scene and then you've got a whole show. What I would often do is give both of these plots including the God document a pre-show plot and a post-show plot for what you do for setup and pack down for the show as well as for act one and act two for both A and B plot. I would put all of those plots into one folder for every single team member so that no matter what position you're doing if you need to know what someone else is doing at a certain time you don't necessarily have to check in with them they might be unavailable to do a check-in so you can just know. As well as these plots I usually do a little cheat plot for the people who are learning the A plot. It is just a little strip that says what scene you're in and like a hint at what the cue is to inspire you to remember where you're meant to go. This is super helpful for when you're learning. When I was on Hamilton learning the A plot Haley Thor did this for me and I found it so incredibly useful. I have shown you an example of it in my side shift gear review video. You can kind of see what that looks like when I pull it out of my little kit but that's it. It's super easy. You can update it as you go depending on how the show changes and how things change for your plot and the amount of people you have and what needs to happen. If you are someone who makes plots like these or has done it for another production in the past or currently and you have some tips please leave them below. If you have any questions and you want to be making it leave them below or jump on over to the discord and we can have a more lengthy chat about it with everyone there. Make sure you follow along to see the new videos that are coming every single Monday. On Monday nights I also stream live on Twitch to watch the videos with you so we can have more of a discussion about what's going on. Make sure you're following me on Instagram as well so you can see updates of videos and streams as well as just general content from the shows that I'm doing in real time.